Hello and welcome to another video everybody. Today we are painting Reaper Miniatures Terra the Silent. This is an old stream from about a year and a half ago I believe it was that I painted this. I edited it down for YouTube. We'll see how it goes, how you guys like it. Um, getting right into it, my base coat here for the brown is Dubai Brown from Scale 75. 95% of the paints used on this are Scale Color Scale 75 paints. Uh, otherwise I will let you know if they are not. Once I get a few coats of the Dubai Brown over for the base coat, I then go over the entire uh, brown surface with uh, Strong Tone from Army Painter to give it a shade. Uh, once that is dry, I then start the highlights with my first layer being a repeat of the Dubai Brown base coat, leaving the wash in the deepest recesses. Um, let me know what you guys think of these these stream recaps or, or me editing down these stream videos. Reason I did this is uh, Terra the Silent is probably one of my top ten best painted miniatures in recent memory, at least. And I was lucky or fortunate enough to have saved the uh, the stream, so I was able to edit it down and uh, and get it down to you know 30 minutes. This, as you can tell, this is uh, sped up ten times, otherwise this video would have been five hours long. So, <laughs> out of a, uh, out of a ten hour, er, total of uh, ten hour streams, uh, stream vids, I was able to edit it down to five hours, and then I had to speed it up ten times to get it down to thirty minutes. Uh, let me know what you guys think, as always. Anyways, uh, uh, again, applying the, uh, Dubai Brown, once the wash is dry as the first highlight, I will then go and, I believe, start applying Iroko from Scale 75, and then Sandalwood from Scale 75, and then Ivory from Scale 75 for the final highlights. I apologize if I get some of the paint names incorrect. Um, it's been a while, I tried looking them up as I was editing this, but I'm not sure if I'll get them all right. Um, and as you guys just saw, some of the uh, stream notifications from when I was actually streaming this live will still be popping up, only because I wasn't able to edit all of them out, um, because then we'd be losing some footage of me actually painting the figure. So I think I got most of them, but still quite a few of them pop up during the video, so I apologize for that. That said, as I, as I mentioned, this is sped up ten times, so they're only on the screen for, you know, a split second or so. And here we are adding the Iroko to the Dubai Brown as as the second highlight. And I will continue adding Iroko in there. Uh, you know, there's no... I, I don't really have precise, you, you know, uh, precise quantities of, of what I add um, as far as how much paint I'm adding. It's basically a brush button tip into what you see on, on my wet palette back there, but I, I yeah, it's not like, you know, 80% uh, brown to 20% Iroko, it's, it's completely random, um, I, I just kind of go with what, what, what looks good, you know, so it's hard for me to really quantify how much I'm adding every time, but, um, at least you get to see the whole process from start to finish on this, uh, and that was my point, uh, another, a quick start to finish video, Again, 30 minutes, we'll see how it looks once it's done. Hopefully not too bad. Um, I have one more Twitch video to edit. And then I'm out of uh, out of saved content, so I'm actually going to have to start producing new content. <laughs> which uh, which I, I'm hoping to get started on something this weekend. Um, probably be another model, although I might fit in a figure somewhere along the way there, so we'll see. Um, anyways, now this, you're starting to see this pop a little bit now. Um, the highlights are definitely starting to show on her, uh, on the brown. Um, like I said, this is, yeah, it's, I'd probably say this is one of my top ten best paint jobs in a long while, if not ever. Um, Terra the Silent, I believe, was a limited edition release from Reaper in 2019 or 18 even. I wasn't really 
I didn't really go into this with any uh, preconceived notions of you know doing a great job on it. It just it's one of those one of those things that just painted up really well and came out really, or in my opinion at least. And obviously, I'll let you guys be the judge of that. But in my opinion, it came out looking quite nice. So uh, that's why I decided to make a YouTube video out of this. Uh, the other one that I have that also came out quite nice that I was quite pleased with was uh, another Reaper figure, Monique de Noir. I believe her name is. And uh, that's going to be the next one I start editing and hopefully have that one done for you guys by next week. Um, the plan is, for better or worse, the plan is to have a video every week, whether it's figure painting or modeling. I don't know how realistic that is with my schedule and, and you know, with my available or available time. But that's the idea. So we'll see how it goes. Um, you know, ultimately, I think it'll be once every two weeks a new video. Once every two weeks, uh, especially with the you know with the models that take much longer, the scale models as opposed to the figures. But we'll see how it goes. Uh, we'll see how far I get with it. Um, again, the good news on this one is it's only 30. I think it's 31 minutes long. So you guys only get to listen to my sexy voice for 31 minutes, and you get to see my sexy face in the corner there for 31 minutes. Um, like I said, this is taken off of a uh, Twitch stream from a couple of years ago. So I, I, you know, I left all the streaming stuff on here. Um, number one, I know I could have edited it out, but too lazy and just not really. I didn't think it really detracted from anything. So, so here we are. <laughs> I'm still slowly adding more Iroko into the Dubai Brown, bringing up the highlights. And it's starting to pop now. The brown is really starting to pop now. It ends up looking quite good at the end. And uh, at this point, I think I started to realize, I'm like, hmm, this figure might actually might actually turn out to look pretty good. So let me let me try and do a better job on it. And this is, uh, sorry, it's not sandalwood. It's I believe it's ivory that I added in there. It's definitely not sandalwood. It doesn't look like it. It is ivory that I added in there for the uh, final highlights. I thought there was sandalwood somewhere in between, but I guess not. Maybe I'm thinking about something else. I have no idea. But I guess there's no sandalwood. Um, anyways, um, you know, self-explanatory. Uh, yeah, I feather my highlights on, so, you know, smaller and smaller brush passes with every highlight. Um, you know, simple figure painting stuff. You just want to do a lot of them, and, and scale 75 paints are... Um, they're uh, very good for glazing, and so just the paints out of the tube even aren't as opaque as your, uh, you know, Vallejo or uh, Games Workshop paints. I don't know. I think they're still crap, so I haven't used Games Workshop paint in a while. But um, as your Vallejo or your other Vallejo or your third Vallejo, those are really the only paints I have experience with recently. So... Um, yeah, they're not as opaque, so they um, they blend a lot. It's a lot easier to feather and or blend with them, which just they're they're a treat to work with. I mean, I I, I swear by scale seventy five paints of this day, and I haven't picked up a figure for you know I haven't picked up a paintbrush to paint a figure for over a year now or almost a year. But um, that said, scale color the scale fantasy line is actually quite horrid. Um, and those are the only two I've tried. I haven't tried any of their newer stuff. And newer for me is, you know, stuff that came out two years ago. <laughs> um, but uh, the scale color line is just just brilliant. Um, anyways, like I said, uh, starting to pop now. Starting to look quite nice. Still got a long ways to go, though. Uh, a few more highlights, and then we have to shade it as well. We have to add some shadows in there to really make it pop that much more. Um... The, the the one thing with this figure, like I said, going into it, I wasn't really expecting to make it, you know, I wasn't really expecting for it to come out that great. It was just a fast, you know, it was just a quick, uh, quick little paint job, or it was supposed to be a quick little paint job, but it actually turned out really well. So, um, here I added some dark leather, or added... Here I prepped some dark leather, uh, about 50% paint and 50% uh, glaze medium. And I'm using it to glaze in some shadows now into the brown. 
Um, I, I like the dark leather. I think it's dark leather or black leather. No, it's dark leather. From scale 75. It's got a little bit of a reddish tint to it, a bit of a reddish hue to it, which works very well for, for shading uh, anything based on Dubai Brown. And now I am also going to glaze in some purple. Uh, again, 50% paint, 50% glaze medium. I use Vallejo glaze medium. Uh, works very well with the scale paints. Uh, again, going to glaze that into into the recesses for, for some deeper shadows. Just to make it pop a little bit more. And I do, I swear to you guys, I used sandalwood at some point on this brown. But I might be wrong. I thought I saw sandalwood when I was editing the video. But that's clearly on my palette. That's ivory that I used for highlights. So I'm, I'm just, clearly I'm just full of shit. I could have sworn that I used sandalwood at some point. Maybe that, maybe that comes later. Who knows? <laughs> Who knows? Good thing is, we're... 11 minutes into the video now, so we're more than, than one-third of the way there. <laughs> so I only have to find things to blab about for 20 more minutes. Um, now I'm doing the same with some black. Uh, glazing some black into the deepest recesses just to really make it pop. Uh, same thing, 50% black and 50% glaze medium. Uh, the black, again, scale color. I think it's just called black. I don't think there's... I don't think they have a fancy name for it. Now the orange. Uh, this is fiery orange, I believe, from Scale Color. Uh, this is going into this uh, her undergarment, undergarments, not her underwear. So uh, what she has on under the uh, under the brown stuff. I decided to go for a bit of a autumny look with her, I guess. So that's that's why the orange. Um, once the the base of the once the base coat of the orange is down. I did apply some strong tone into, or I washed her orange parts with some strong tone just to tone it down, or just to give it some shadows, and then I went back over with the base coat, and I started adding the ivory for highlights. Um, the one, you know, one thing I try to do is kind of, obviously I don't minimize the amount of paints I use, but you kind of want to use especially for like highlights if it works like an ivory worked in the brown and it works in the orange just to kind of keep it tied together you know um, even though you're using a completely different color uh, mixing one of the same colors that you used on both portions in at the same time kind of helps to keep it more uniform uh, neater and just just give it better looking contrast I guess if that makes sense which it probably doesn't, but in my head it makes sense, so that's all that matters, right? <laughs> Anyways, I think I applied, what, about five, four or five highlights to the orange. Uh, the brown was a good, what, ten? Somewhere around there. So I'm very happy with how it turned out. Now we're moving on to the red bits uh, using dark red... I think, from scale 75, whatever their darkest red is. Um, for my highlight color, I will use Antares Red. Bring that all the way up to Antares Red. Um, one thing about the red that I screwed up on, uh, on, on some of my historical figures, I was able to get away with highlighting red with glazes of white. It didn't look that good on here uh, on her. I'll let you guys know when I'm to that point and when I make that mistake. Um, once I figured out that it didn't look that good on her, uh, what I ended up doing was actually going or glazing over the uh, the white with some Antares red, followed by some fiery orange, and it actually helped quite a bit to where where it looked good. So so I did end up fixing that. Um, but yeah, at first I just used white to glaze with. Now you never want to use mix white into red to highlight with because it will make it look pink, unless that's what you're going for. Um, and even me glazing this on here, not mixing it into the actual wet paint, but glazing it over the dry paint still made it look a little too pinkish. So I uh, I ended up glazing, as I said, uh, the, the Antares red 
and the fiery orange over it, and it turned out quite well. So um, this is about halfway through, I believe, the highlights on the red. Those of you guys that know me will know that I absolutely love painting red, uh, so I I specifically take my time on painting red because I just it's it's one of my favorite colors to paint. Uh, red, green, brown, and blue are probably in that order probably my favorite colors to paint uh yellow being a close fifth uh as as hard as yellow can be to paint for a lot of people i actually absolutely enjoy painting yellow uh, my my least favorite being white and black uh white is just a pain it takes way too long because to get a smooth layer of white over anything you have to dilute the shit out of it whether it's scale paints or vallejo paints or shitty games workshop paints or even shittier army painter paints you still have to dilute the crap out of white and it takes layer upon layer upon layer upon layer to get a decent looking result so i that's why i don't like painting white Black, on the other hand, you have to glaze the shit out of it with highlights because anything other than, or anything stronger than a glaze over black will just make it look chalky and crappy. So black just takes a very long time to highlight, while white takes a very long time to get a decent base of. So not a fan of those two. Um... Also not really a fan of, uh, oh, purple, no, I guess I like purple, I guess I like painting purple. Yeah, I guess just black and white would be, would be the two colors that I would avoid the most, painting, painting wise, anything else, anything else that come at me, I got this, maybe. <laughs> uh, this is, I believe, yeah, this is where I started applying the white to the edges of the cloak and the, uh, the edges of the plume on the helmet on the ground and the base. And it just, it wasn't, it wasn't looking that great to me. Like, it wasn't bad, but it was just, it wasn't looking that great. I wasn't getting the, wasn't getting the proper color that I wanted. Um, so that's why I ended up going back with the uh, uh, red glazes and the orange glazes afterwards to get a better color on it. Uh, me spinning that figure around there, that was the end of that one stream session and this is me going back over it the next day um like yeah as you can see i've got the red on there and i think i have the orange next to it if if i got it yet but i'm um, glazing the red and finishing or fixing up the, the the red um now what i'm doing is i'm outlining the uh the trim on the cloak the the freehand pattern that I did, a simple freehand pattern that I did on it and actually turned out quite nice uh, that is going to be painted in non-metallic gold so what I'm doing is anything that's getting non-metallic gold is now going to be base coated in snake bite leather from Vallejo game color from the Vallejo game color line um, I know a lot of you will probably disagree on this but I, I have a very simple non-metallic gold recipe uh, this one I didn't make as simple, but my, my simplest method is snakebite leather from Vallejo Game Color. Uh, highlights of soul yellow from scale 75, and then final highlights of white from scale 75. After the snakebite leather base goes on, you do a uh, wash, a thin down wash of uh, strong tone and a thin down wash of purple. Or purple tone, if if you're using the army painter uh, washes, and that's pretty much my it's pretty much my recipe from non-metallic metals. Um, this I did not use the uh, strong tone or the purple tone. I used a blue and purple glaze at the end to glaze in the shadows, but it still turned out okay. And by okay, I mean I was I was happy with it. So so definitely okay with it. Um, so my snake bite leather base goes down on all the parts that are going to be gold. After the base, I will give it a, I do give it a wash of strong tone. I'm sorry, I do give it a wash of strong tone on this as well. And then I slowly start adding soul yellow from scale 75, mixing it into a snake bite leather. Again, um, as far as how many... 
how many drops of what into what and how many I I, I have no idea. I just kind of go with what looks good, and, and when I think it's time to switch over, I switch over. Kind of, you know what I mean? I yeah, whatever fits on the tip of my brush going into that snake bite leather, basically. So I don't know. Call it half a drop to six drops of snake bite leather, half a drop of so yellow to six drops of snake bite leather, somewhere around there. Probably. I yeah. I it's hard for me to. I don't really, I don't really measure out any of my mixes or any of what I use, so I couldn't tell you guys like what goes into what. But anyhow, as far as the highlights go, you know, anywhere, and that's another thing. Anywhere I see a reflection, that will explain it to me. What do you mean? Where do I see? It? I, I, I don't know how to explain that. Like, I didn't, I didn't learn how to paint by like you know observing. Uh, light reflections on real life objects like a lot of artists do and I've you know I did it or I've been doing it for shit close to 24 years now and it just kind of came with with me just trialing er uh, you know trial and error and I, I just kind of do whatever looks good you know whether that reflection would really be there in real life or not I, I don't know nor do I care if it looks good to me, then, then it looks good to me, you know? So, it's hard for me, it's hard for me to explain, oh, this is where you put the highlights, or this is how many highlights you should put, or this is how they should look, or so on and so forth. Because, I just, you know, I just look at it as I go. And if it looks good, then I keep going. If it looks bad, then I fix it, and... and figure out what looks good, as opposed to where it should be, I guess, if that makes sense. Um, anyways, now going in with pure soul yellow, and then uh, the final highlights on the gold are going to be a 50-50 mix of soul yellow and white, and then pure white for the, uh, for the final shining dots, <laughs> um, for lack of a better word. Uh, my gold, I actually really like my non-metallic gold recipe. It's very, very cartoony, and you guys that know me, you, you know I like that cartoony, over-exaggerated look. Uh, my, uh, my, my steel and my silver non-metallics, on the other hand, I'm still not fully comfortable with uh, painting small surfaces with with non-metallic, either steel or silver, whatever, whatever you want to call it. I'm okay with. Um, like she didn't have that much on her, so I was okay with it. Bigger surfaces, on the other hand, I'm still very weary of it. Um, only because I'm just... I, I don't know. I don't know why I have gold figured out and why I don't have steel figured out. That's... Yeah, I have no clue. Um, this is just me fixing up any brown portions or any red portions that I screwed up at this point. Um, and yeah, there she is. I mean, she's looking pretty good. Uh, now the purple and the blue... One drop purple, one drop blue, one drop uh, glaze medium, one drop glaze medium into the blue and the purple. These are the shadows for the gold now. Um, once I'm done glazing in the shadows, I then go over with pure soul yellow again, just to bring up the, uh, the, the shiny bits, and then I add the white. Or I start adding the white, I mix in 50-50 soul yellow and white, and then I add the, the final details of the white. So this is just me basically fixing up any mistakes. Oh no, I guess I already added the white. I'm sorry, wow, I lost myself there for a second. Yeah, that's that was me fixing up mistakes and the white was already in there, it was done. I didn't see it in my palette, me talking and being sped up. Wow, okay. <laughs> um, now we're doing dark leather. Dark leather? No. Is this red leather? No, it's not red leather. It's one of the leather colors from Scale 75. This is what I meant when I said I'm going to screw up the colors when I'm telling you guys about them. But this is one of the leather colors from Scale 75. Again, if this wasn't a year and a half ago that I painted this, it would probably be a lot easier for me to tell you what I used. But um, I'm hitting you know, all her pouches, her belts, her straps, uh, so on and so forth. J or uh, the scabbard as well. Scabbards, maybe? I think she has multiple ones. Anyways, <laughs> um just to break up from, from the regular browns on here. I didn't want to make her... I didn't make it... I didn't want to make it all brown, and or, or that brown, so... Yeah, the reason I did that was... 
in, in retrospect, I probably would have used... Probably would have used a more reddish brown uh, on, on the belts uh, and, the, and the pouches and the straps and the scabbard. But um, also, I think it added nice contrast to the warm brown and to the warm red. Uh, maybe what I should have done, actually, like a very pale, like a very pale blue. I think that would have looked cool, too. But, anyways, um, yeah, this is what leather is. It's, it's one of the leather colors from Scale. Um, adding some ivory to it for highlights. I probably did, I think I did three layers of highlights on there. I really over-exaggerated the highlights because I knew that at the end, to tone it back down, I would be applying some dark tone to it. And so I was okay with over-exaggerating them a little bit too much or making them a little rough because I knew the dark tone would bring it right back down. Um, but yeah, uh, once I'm done with the purplish leather... <laughs> Uh, there's not that much left on her, actually. There's going to be her skin tone, which, don't ask me what colors I used, because I tried for the life of me to remember what colors these are. But it's basically the base tone for, for Caucasian skin, uh, followed by the mid-tone, followed by the highlight, followed by a purple and blue and red glaze in the shadows for skin. And then, oh yeah, the silver, or, or the uh, steel, non-metallic metal. That probably takes longer than anything else. And here we go. I used um, anthracite gray from scale, followed by arctic blue from scale, which is probably my favorite scale color of all time. Arctic blue is amazing. Uh, followed by white. So that that's basically my non-metallic metal steel recipe uh, with purple, blue, and black glazes to, to bring out the shadows. Um, fairly simple. Well, fairly simple, I mean, yeah. <laughs> um, and then, yeah, then we move on to... once Yeah, once the steel, once the silver is done, then we move on to the face. God, are there any... is that it? Shit, I'm used to talking for a lot longer than this, but I just realized that we're 27 minutes in, so yeah, I guess that's gonna be it, and then we do the base, and then we're done. It's that easy. Yeah, I wish it was that easy. I wish I could paint figure to this quality in 30 minutes. Wouldn't that be nice? Figure this quality in 30 minutes, 120 bucks per figure, times, what, 16? Yeah. 2,000 bucks a day, almost? <laughs> That'd be nice. Um, anyways, I'm just blabbing now, so, um, again, the, the steel NNM is coming along, um, adding a little bit of arctic blue into the anthracite gray. With every highlight, uh, I just want to pick out the edges where I think the, the, the light would fall, or where I think the reflection would fall. Um, other than that... Like I said, I have one more video to edit from Twitch, which I'm hoping to have up by next weekend. And then after that, I am shit out of luck as far as old footage goes. So I'm actually going to have to start producing something, whether that's going to be a figure or a model, I'm not sure. Um, figures, obviously, are a lot easier. Models are a lot more epic looking when they're done. So... <laughs> I don't know what the what the next one's going to be, but I'm going to try my damnedest to have regular content for you guys and see what actually happens. I mean, I'm sure that after I post this, I probably won't be back for like another year, year and a half. <laughs> but my goal is to have some regular footage, or semi-regular footage at least, and I, I know I say that every video, and I know I don't do it every video, but we'll see. We'll see how it goes. Um, anyways, uh, the non-metallics are done, are about to be done. We're almost done with the video, actually. Uh, now I'm about to move into the face, the flesh, which is very quick at ten times the speed, and then we're about to move into the base, and then we're done. Um, 
yeah, shit. I got like 40 seconds left. So I'm gonna, uh, the base I also used Iroko for. I then used Dark Tone to wash it down. Then for the highlights, Iroko and Ivory. And then I put some Tufts down and it was done. So this is a resin cast base as well. Did I miss the footage? Did I not put in the footage of me doing that base? Maybe that's why. Maybe that's why. Huh, I seem to be missing some footage. That might be why. Is that actually the case? Yep, that is the case. Well, so you guys know what happened um, as far as how I finished painting her with what I used. Uh, sorry about the missing footage. I had a little bit of a glitch with my uh, editor when I was editing this. I didn't realize I lost some footage at the end. But anyhow, here she is finished. Here's some pictures at the end for you guys to enjoy, maybe. Yeah, there you go. There's some pictures for you guys to enjoy. Um, thank you for watching. Let me know what you guys thought. And we'll see you in the next one. We'll see you in the next freaking dumpster fire or whatever the hell you want to call it. Um, sub if you're not. Like if you didn't or hated it. See you guys later.